So each one of us has chosen a favorite chapter or passage, and Diana, for you, you uh, like chapter one. Yes, that's correct. That's the chapter about the Japanese space program. Yes, yes it is. One of the things that I found extremely interesting in chapter one is uh, the contrast between the um, Canadian astronaut search and the Japanese astronaut search and the kind of things that they're asking them to do in Japan uh, to demonstrate that they have the right stuff uh, versus uh, the Canadians. Page 30. Some selection committees, the Canadian space agencies for instance, appear to put greater emphasis on disaster coping skills. The candidates were sent to a damage control training facility where they learned to escape burning space capsules and sinking helicopters. They leapt feet first into swimming pools from terrifying heights while wave generators pushed five-foot swells. A percussive action movie soundtrack ramped up the drama. So that's Canada. And then in Japan, they have them folding a thousand paper cranes. I don't know if I'd rather do the thousand paper cranes or escape the, <laughs> or being the Canadian side. I would choose the paper. I would choose the origami crane. I, pref I prefer folding than you know going through a sort of like a uh, training camp. You know. Would you want to be an astronaut? Do you have such an ambition? Yeah, that's a good question. Now, mm. after reading the book, I don't think I would like to be an astronaut. I did when I was a kid, but. <laughs> once I learned about that I had asthma, it was it was a thing about breathing. How do you breathe in outer space? That made it worse. So I think every agency focuses on different things, and that's that was the. Is there anything else you want to point out to us from chapter one? Oh, there's also this. Uh, there's also this passage in uh, page thirty, where um, in the middle, where uh, Roach says earlier, I asked Tachibana whether he was planning to pull any surprises on his candidates to see how they cope under the stress of a sudden emergency. He told me he had given thought to disabling a isolation chamber toilet. Again, not the answer I was expecting, but genius in its way. The footage might not play as well with a kettle drum soundtrack, and then again it might, but it's a more apt scenario. A broken toilet is not only more representative of the challenges of space travel, but we'll see in chapter 14, stressful in its own right. Ah, when she asked how, when she told them the, how he's going to surprise the candidates and the, how he's going to, you, know, you know, disabling the toilet or, some, or something like that, it's sort of like, sort of like an experiment that you will do with lab rats. Like you would like change their environment and see how they're going to react. Kind of interest, kind of interesting that you will to like make sure they have the hardiest rats. Yes. <laughs> and then on page thirty-two, uh, at the beginning where it says, "Did make this makes the Mercury era right stuff, the wrong stuff." Astronauts have to be people who play well with others. <laughs> they want Richard Gere in mind seat Rodante. Now, if Richard Gere is an astronaut and he's going, I might set up uh, uh, sign up for that <laughs> mission. Well, George Clooney. You would is, be right? willing to be sealed in the space station yes. with that man. Yes. George Clooney and Don't send the forget bullet. the bathing situation, Monica. Oh, well, yeah. Richard Gere. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> he's got more hair. He's gonna have more dander. 